morning, Cosmopolitan family and friends. Once again, we're joining together for our communion service and for words of encouragement. Let us look to the Lord and let us not forget to pray for our nation as we see what we've been going through with peaceful demonstration and even the violence that has taken place. God is dealing with racism in America today. And we hate to see this violence that has taken place but I see that a change is about to take place, that God is moving and raising up a new army. And this army that he's raising up is dealing with the issue of racism. But we're going to have to do what God is calling us to do, is get the word out and let them know that what is missing in the equation is a knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And so we're praying for our nation. We're praying for the peace of our nation. We're praying that uh, those that are doing the violence will be brought to justice. And we're praying that those four officers that committed the crime against uh, George Floyd, that they be brought to justice. So let us have a word of prayer. Gracious on the Father, we come and we thank you for this time that we will spend studying your word. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we're going to talk about new beginnings. I don't know if you've ever stopped and made this statement, I wish I could start all over again. I wish I could just have a new beginning. The sad thing is that if we could start all over again, we probably would make the same mistakes that we made because we have that old sin nature. I want to talk about a new beginning this morning that begins with our knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. And when I began to look and study and unpack this particular text, I looked at the fact that the new creation come about because of our relationship with Jesus Christ and with our Heavenly Father through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He says, therefore, now you've got to go back and read that therefore. Why, Why is all of this put here? And after you understand that God is calling us to reconcile, to reconcile ourselves, to be reconciled to him, and then to reconcile ourselves with the relationship with those that are around us. So this is a, a area of reconciliation where God is saying, first of all, reconcile the relationship, the broken relationship that you have with God the Father. That relationship was broken back in the Garden of Eden when Adam sinned. When Adam sinned, the relationship between God and man was broken. But Jesus Christ, the second Adam, came in and he's restored that relationship for those of us that come and, and receive God's plan of salvation. And what we have to understand is there ought to be evidence of that new uh, beginning. We ought to see some changes in our lives. We ought to be able to, to hold on to the fact that God is in our when we think about a new beginning, how does this come about? Well, we find in John 3 and 3, it says you must be born again. This new birth is what produces the new creation. When we come into that new birth, the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, then and the plan of salvation, then we experience the new creation. We have not been refurbished. We have not been remodeled. But we have been created anew. And how do I know that we've been created anew? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, it tells us that we have that we are partake of, of a divine nature. So we have a new nature that's in us. Now we know that we've been given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We were told and by Paul in Acts. The second chapter, verse 32, it was this sermon that Peter was speaking on the day of Pentecost. It says, repent and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the moment I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, the same moment I get the gift of the Holy Spirit. I have the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. So now the, that new creation is coming about. First of all, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Then we have a, the, the divine, we're partakers of the divine nature of God. 
Well, what is, how do you know that? In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, As many as received him, as many as received Jesus Christ, to them gave he the power, the authority to become children of God. So we're now a part of that. Uh, we're partakers of the divine nature and the family of God. I am a son of God. You are a son or daughter of God. And so we see that by us, in, by, by that new creation. And in us, we have been given, the, uh, we've been blessed to have the promise of the of partaking of the divine nature. So I want you to read 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, and see the promise. The promise is that we will have, that we will be partakers of the divine nature. We were told over in John, the 16th chapter, before Jesus left his disciples, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter. That's the Holy Spirit, that he may abide, that he may dwell in you. So this new beginning is, uh, is one that we ought to all be excited about because in this new beginning, we have forgiveness of sin. In this new beginning, we have eternal life. In this new beginning, we have a new father. Well, Pastor, what do you mean we have a new father? Did you not know that our father up until this point was Satan? Because we had a sin nature, and the sin nature is headed up by none other than Satan. When Adam and Eve sinned, when Adam sinned in the garden, then the relationship between Adam and God was broken. And what we find is that when Jesus was talking to the Jews, in John chapter 8, we find that in verse 44, it said, you are of your father, the devil, Satan. And so what we find is that because of the sin nature that we have, you and I uh, are sons and daughters of Satan, who is a liar and a murderer. But I'm so thankful that God didn't leave us that way. God's grace was extended to you and I. He wanted to make us a new creation. He wanted to make us over again. He wanted to give us a new uh, spirit. And that, that spirit that is indwelling us is the Holy Spirit. And we are partakers of the divine nature of God. So in us, in us, we have that old nature. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And we are partakers of the divine nature of God. Now that ought to get you excited all by, your, by itself. But I have a new father. I am a child of God. And because I'm a child of God, I should take on the characteristics that is seen in his son, Jesus Christ, that are a part of who God the Father is. And I ought to start behaving like a child of God. That's what it ought to, that, that's the way it ought to be. You and I have been blessed in the sense that God is dealing with us. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. We are new. We have a heavenly father. We have uh, been given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And then you and I have a king that is sitting on the throne. I'm not talking about the throne, the heavenly throne. I'm talking about the throne of our life. Jesus Christ paid the price and he paid and he deserved and he, he, uh, and he has the right to sit on the throne. But too many times, those of us that are familiar with the four spiritual laws, we know that we've got to get ourselves off the throne and allow Christ to sit on that throne. He's not going to pull us down. We're going to have to give it up and allow him to sit and to be king of our lives. And then we know that kingship will be fulfilled when he returned for the millennium reign where he would reign here on earth for a thousand years. Right now, he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. So we have this relationship that is totally new. I have forgiveness of my sin. I have the peace of God indwelling me. The rest that God has promised us, that eternal rest. I have that eternal rest, what we call the Canaan rest here on earth, because you know Canaan, was just a place, it was a promised land that God had promised to the children of Israel. And he said he was going to give them rest. You and I can have Canaan rest here on earth, but we have that perfect rest, that eternal rest with God, our Father, in his heavenly kingdom. And I, that's exciting. And so when we began to look at 
what do we have? How do we, how do we know that we see what happens is that when we have that, when we are a new creation, things begin to change. Our lives begin to change. There's just certain things that I don't find fulfilling. You see, uh, that sin nature says, if it make you feel good, do it. Because you're fulfilling the, the desires of the flesh. But when you're a new creation, then you want to fulfill the desires of our Heavenly Father. The one that, that sent his son to be our Savior. And so I, I know that for me, looking at this new beginning, oh, I can't go back and start over from a new birth, but I can have a new spiritual birth. I can have that birth and I have had that birth that took place. And when it took place, God indwell us with his Holy Spirit. And so he said, old things will pass away. Those things that used to bring uh, joy to us, not joy, I, let me say happiness. Because joy comes from the Lord. Everybody know that? You see, I, I can be happy over something and not have any joy. I can have a brand new house and not have any joy. But the house made me happy. But joy comes from within because God gives us that joy of knowing that we are obedient to the will of God. And so in this new creation, we begin to do those things that are pleasing to the flesh. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. We produce the fruits of the spirit, the fruit, not fruits, but the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter five, verse 22 tells us that, but the fruit of the spirit is love. See, when you become a new creation, then you learn how to love others. You know, when you love somebody, you can't do them wrong. So a new creation will produce love in us, and it comes from the one who is perfect love. But God is love. So that love flows to us. Even folks that I don't like, I love them. And I learn to like them, because that's what God would have for me to do. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples by the way that you love one another. And it goes on to say that uh, the fruit is joy, peace, long suffering. Can I put it this way? Suffering long. Learn how to suffer long with some people that are not like you. People that you've been praying for for a long time. People that are wrong you. Learn how to suffer long for that person. Because God suffered long for you and I. For us to turn our lives around. And we didn't turn it around. Let me correct that. For us to come to him and he turn our lives around. And then it says... Uh, kindness. We need to learn how to be kind to one another. Speak words of kindness, even to those that misuse us. As I look back over the week and I see all the, the things that have been happening to uh, black men for centuries and black people as a whole. But we must understand that God wants us to be kind to those. And, and I know it's hard. It's hard. It takes God when somebody's spitting on you, when somebody has their knee on your neck and you dying. Now, we're not talking about that, that, that George Floyd had to be kind because he was in a position where he couldn't be one way or the other. But what I'm saying, we have to learn how to be kind to people that have misused us and have abused us. Then it goes on to tell us what the fruit is. It says it's goodness, it's faithfulness. Learn how to be faithful to who? To God. You see, the children of Israel had lost their way in the wilderness because they, did, they were not faithful. They did not trust God. They did not believe that God was going to be able to deliver them into the promised land. They get into Kadesh Barnea and what do they do? They choose 12 men to go over into the promised land. 
God had already told him. God didn't say sense about it with your promised land. He said, go ahead and take the promised land. He had already given it to him. But what did they do? God permitted them. God permitted them to go ahead. Okay, he said, I told you it was your land. But now you want to send the spies over there? Go over there. And what did the spies do? They went out and found that the land was flowing with milk and honey. Instead of them looking at what the land was flowing with, they looked at the giants in the land. See, when you're a new creature, you got to follow God's will. And you are. You know, you might not be walking, but you're going to have that willingness experience of wondering. you saved and you're going to be going to heaven. But you're wandering around in the wilderness when God says, I've given you rest, peace, joy, love. God is trying to get us to say, look, take your Christianity and put some legs to it. Walk a walk of faith. Don't be like the children of Israel. They believed that God could bring them out of Egypt, but they didn't believe that God could take them into the promised land. Do you believe that God can forgive your sins, but you don't believe God can give you peace? Do you not believe, uh, do you believe that God can bring salvation to you, but he can't give you a job? Do you believe that God can save you and forgive you of your sin, but he can't give you a husband or wife or bring your wayward child in? God said, trust me. Continue to pray. Lean on. So what he is asking about is being faithful. Gentleness. Gentleness is for you and I to learn how to, to be gentle towards others and, and, and to have self under control. It's not weakness. And so we see these things are produced and there would be evidence. Evidence that we are a new creation. And it goes on. And if you read uh, on uh, in here, you will find that before that it was just saying that there are some things that you and I need to put off. If you're fornicating, you need to stop it. If you commit an adultery, you need to stop it. If you're lying, you need to stop it. I don't have to come up and bring out a whole list of anything for you to do because the Holy Spirit living in you will convict you of your sin. But it's you fell into yield to it. So what I'm saying is that since I'm a new creation and old things have passed away, there ought to be some things dropping out of my life. There ought to be some things that, that I, and I'm not talking about where I'm drinking a having a drink or whether I'm, I, I, I like to go to a party or something like that. Those things, those things God would deal with. But when I'm blatantly going out, practicing sin, committing adultery, fornicating, getting drunk, doing all this stuff, and then talking about I'm a child of God. Now, I'm not God, and, and I believe that you can be saved and committed some of those sin, but you should not have any peace. You are a new creation. Remember, you haven't been refurbished. You haven't been remodeled. You've been made anew. And there ought to be evidence that you are a new creature in Christ by the lifestyle that you live. Do you get more joy in doing the things of the world than you do of God? You've been given a fresh beginning. A fresh beginning. God is saying, you can do it my way because I am your father. You don't have to walk out of the flesh. You can walk out of the spirit because I have empowered you to do it. Oh, church, we are a body of believers that have a father that truly cares for us. One that loved us when we were unlovable. One that commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 8. And I'm hoping that we begin to walk in obedience. Let me say it this way. Since God has made us a new creation, why don't we show the world how much God loves us and what he did for us? It's a good thing for us to go out and feed the hungry, feed those that are hungry. It's a good
good thing was to clothe those that are in need, uh, to help someone along the way. But if we don't give them Jesus, we just help them meet their needs for a moment. But we give them Jesus, then they have, they can have that eternal peace and joy and rest. New beginning. Oh, it's filled with joy. New beginning, I can call on my daddy when nobody else is around. New beginning lets me know that I have the indwelling of God's spirit in us. Church, we have sermons that we get up and we shout about and we run around and we feel good. And those are good sermons, but if there's no evidence that there, that the word is being applied to our lives, doesn't mean that I'm doing something wrong, I need to change, but am I studying God's word more? Do I have a closer walk? Am I loving my neighbor more than I did before? Do I walk around still trying to do some work in order to be saved or I'm so righteous so heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good God want us to live and let our light so shine before men so that they might see our good work and glorify our Father which is in heaven what God has already created in you. You were created a new creature. You don't have to prove anything to me. I don't have to prove anything to you. I just need to walk it. And if I walk it, evidence will be seen. Last night I Got up in the middle of the night. I was getting ready to do a little preparation for my, for my study for the sermon for today. And it was dark in the room and I got up and I flipped on the light. I didn't have to make that light shine. All I had to do is just flip on the switch. The light came on. Darkness rushed out. As a child of God, are you trying to make the light shine? Or are you letting the light shine? I'm thankful that we have an opportunity to share the word with you today. I'm praying that you would take it and apply it to your life and ask yourself, am I walking like a new creation? You are made new. It's not a question of are you new? It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So it should be, since you are a child of God, you've been made new. Now, the question is, have you shared it the old stuff? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. God is with the old things, our sins have been forgiven. I mean, you think about what you've done. And God, by his grace, washed them away. Think about it. And ask yourself, do I walk like I've been given a new life, a new beginning? God bless you. Now it's time for us to partake of our communion. We ask that you will gather your elements we will come to the table. We ask in God's blessing upon this. Father God, bless these elements that represent the body of Jesus Christ. As we partake it apart from each other, but united in our spirit. We ask you a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night that Jesus betrayed, he took bread from the table. 
broke it and passed it around to the disciples. And he made a memorial unto him. He says, often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We're looking back to Calvary, but we don't stay there. Because he said, I'm coming again. And we look forward to his return. And so let us eat this in remembrance of that body that was beaten beyond recognition on our behalf. That body that was nailed to the cross on our behalf. God died for sinners. And if there are any sinners that have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, Today is the day that you can do it. We're going to eat this. Those of us of the household of faith believe that this represents his broken body. Likewise, he took the cup. This cup represents the shed blood of Jesus. We drink it in remembrance of the blood that was shed on our behalf where we have forgiveness of our sins. Let us drink together. Praise God. Now, if there's anyone here today that has confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, maybe you're rededicating yourself. Maybe you're saying that I am that new creation, but I'm not living like you're making that decision today I'd love to hear from you if you are one that for the first time has invited Jesus Christ into your life we also want to hear from you and you can just send us a note and we will get in contact with you and say today I received Jesus as my Savior we also would like to make mention of our financial support you can contribute through Cash App or you can contribute through PayPal or the church website. We ask that uh, you contribute and help us in our financial needs to meet the obligation of our local congregation. May God bless you and keep you and be safe and know that we will come back together again. May God keep you into that time. And everybody said amen. Goodbye. Yeah.